Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. In this episode, what we're going to talk about is suspicion. And we've said suspicion, the poisonous tree. In reality, one of the main causes for the breakup and the uh, divorce and the separation is suspicion. And it's one of the root causes of the breakup of marriages. And it's one of the sources of the breakup of marriages. We start with suspicion and then we lead to other things and ultimately we lead to divorce. Suspicion and magic. How does this work? What's the link between being suspicious of your spouse and you know being under the influence of magic? Before we begin, it's very important to note that we shouldn't just jump to conclusions that I myself am possessed or I myself are, you know, I'm suffering with magic. However, we're going to mention some signs and symptoms, but the points of benefit that we derive, whether you are afflicted or whether you are not, they still apply to all of us, inshallah. The first thing to note, as we've mentioned, how much the shayateen, they love to cause divorce. How much they love and how much they are rewarded by Iblis when they can cause a man and a woman to separate. What's the main way that they do this brothers and sisters? Remember that the shaytan is not going to come to you in a red outfit with horns and he's not going to knock on your door and say, Hi there, I'm here to destroy your marriage. How do they come? In what form? They come and they whisper. They come and they place these doubts in our mind. We have to understand this. We are dealing with an unseen enemy. They can see us, but we cannot see them. And one of the main ways that they come to try and destroy the marriage is to make you feel suspicious of your spouse, to make you start doubting your spouse. It's very, very important, subhanAllah, that we understand this. That when these doubts start coming into our minds, then we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recognize, you know this doubt, you know this suspicion that I'm having about my spouse, this is stage one of the attack of the shayateen upon my marriage. This is stage one. Because when they can start getting me to doubt, then it leads to stage two to three, to four, and eventually, perhaps it will break the marriage apart in totality. So the shayateen, they will come and try to whisper to you and get you to doubt one another. So you might begin to start, th you know, think bad of your spouse. Anything they do, there's always an ulterior motive in your eyes. He has received a phone call from work. Oh no, he must be speaking to another woman. She is going out to do the shopping or whatever it may be. Oh no, she's going out to meet another man. Do you see that initially you trust that individual? It's a phone call from work and I take the phone call, no problem. The kids are screaming, so I go outside. I take the phone call. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But Shaitan, he comes to you and whispers. He's left the room so you can't hear his conversation. He's speaking to another woman. He's cheating on you. He's having an affair. Okay, she goes to buy the household items. The man is at work and she goes to buy the household items. He comes home and she's not home because she's not back, you know, with the shopping yet. She must be with another man now. Do you see how these doubts, they are placed in our minds? This is from the shaitan. These doubts where we begin to doubt our spouses. We've known them for many years or we love them, we have, we have the unbreakable bond of nikah, this holy nikah, this blessing, it's between us. Yet subhanallah, now we begin to doubt our spouses. Or we start thinking about the in-laws. The in-laws are here, they want to take my children away from me. The in-laws are here, you know, I don't want my husband to go and speak to his mother because perhaps she is poisoning him against me. And it does happen. We affirm this, that the mother-in-law sometimes is the most destructive tool for the shayateen. And we're going to talk about this in the next episodes, inshallah. But look, 
Out of nowhere, you start to suspect. Out of nowhere, you start to doubt. Out of nowhere, you start to let the shayateen take control of your mind. And these doubts, they are going to destroy you if you do not put an end to them immediately. I want to give an example of suspicion like a tree. Suspicion is like a tree. This tree, as we know, they send the roots into all the different parts. This is just like suspicion. Once suspicion takes hold in your heart, what does it do? It sends its roots deep into your heart. It sends its roots deep into all of the different places of your heart until there is not a single place in your heart except that there is suspicion there as well. There is suspicion there and now whatever happens, however positive a situation, you're always going to look at it from the perspective of suspicion, from the perspective of spying until it can literally cause the death of the heart. The heart dies. The heart dies. Allah mentions, no rather, there is a covering over their hearts. And as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, Indeed, in the body, there is a piece of flesh, which if this piece of flesh, it is rectified and it is good, then the whole of the body becomes, becomes good. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ And if this piece of flesh becomes, and it, and it becomes, it goes off, and it becomes uh, distraught, and it becomes destroyed, and it becomes black, then the whole of the body is ruined. This one piece of flesh, if it becomes good, the whole of the body is good. If it becomes ruined, then the whole of the body is ruined. أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ The Messenger السلام, said, Indeed, it is the heart. So this suspicion which takes root in the heart, if it causes the ruin of your heart, it will cause the ruin of your body as well. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in very serious terms about suspicion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ujtanibu kathiran min al-dhan. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have believed, avoid much suspicion. Avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some of suspicion, it is sin. It's actually sinful to be suspicious sometimes. And then Allah mentions, Wala And do not spy on one another. Why does Allah mention spying after suspicion? Because brothers and sisters, suspicion leads to spying. That suspicion that you have of your spouse, out of nowhere, you have no evidence, you have no reason to be suspicious. Yet, you have let the shayateen whisper and you have become suspicious. The next stage is going to be spying. And Allah says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And do not spy on one another. Likewise, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Beware of suspicion, for suspicion is the falsest of speech. Suspicion is the falsest of speech. You have a wife who is so chaste and she guards her modesty and she covers herself and she only has you in her life. Yet, with no proof, with no evidence, you begin to suspect her. With no reason, you begin to suspect her. With no reason, you begin to think bad of her. This is why the Messenger wasallam said, it's the falsest of speech. Out of nowhere, you are putting this accusation on your spouse. Out of nowhere, you are having bad thoughts of your spouse. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Think about this. It is the falsest of speech. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued and he said, Do not seek out one another's faults. Do not seek out one another's faults and do not spy on one another. Do not compete with one another 
Do not envy one another. Do not hate one another. Do not turn away from one another. O oh, slaves of Allah, be brothers. Look at the guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Allah mentions about the Prophet Alaihi Salam, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ that indeed you are upon an exalted character. You are upon the best of character. Subhanallah. And as Allah mentions, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنٌ That indeed in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best of examples to follow. And the Messenger alayhi is saying, suspicion is the falsest of speech. Allah is saying that some suspicion is sin. You're going to be sinful. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, and Allah says, do not spy on one another. Do not seek out one another's faults. Brothers and sisters, live with your spouse in peace and harmony and tranquility. You have faults, they have faults. Overlook one another's faults. Work together in righteousness and piety. Allah says, Work together in righteousness and piety. Do not work together upon sin and transgression. Suspicion is sinful. Suspecting your wife, suspecting your husband with no reason whatsoever and then spying on them, you're going to be punished by Allah. Because Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they have taught us what we need to live together in peace and harmony and tranquility. Spying on one another, being suspicious of one another, this is going to lead to destruction. This is not going to lead to peace and tranquility in the household. Now let's look at the children. Imagine your child is sitting there watching you and learning from you. Your child is a, is, a, is a sponge. Whatever they see from you, this is what they're going to be. They're just a mirror of you. They're a mirror of you. So you see your spouse and then you begin to spy on them. You become suspicious of them. You seek out one another's faults. How do you think your children are going to behave? Do you know what your children are going to be thinking? Maybe mom and dad, they seek out my faults the way they seek out each other's faults. Maybe mom and dad, they think bad of me the same way that they think bad of one another. And your children are going to blame themselves. This is going to lead to a complex. This is going to lead to an inferiority complex. Maybe mom and dad don't love me. Maybe mom and dad don't care for me. Maybe I'm not a good son. Maybe I'm not a good daughter. Do you know what this is going to lead to? This is going to lead to serious problems in later life where they don't feel fulfilled at home. They can't turn to their parents for advice. Who are they going to turn to? They're going to turn to the internet. They're going to turn to any person who gives them a little bit of love and a little bit of attention. Maybe they'll turn to drugs. Look, it all stemmed from this suspicion. It all stemmed from this spying. It all stemmed from this arguing and bickering and constantly looking for one another's faults. Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah, a great tabi'i, a great one from the scholars of Islam. He said, maybe one of you looks at his brother and he sees the dirt in his brother's eye. He sees the speck of dirt in his brother's eye, yet he does not see the filth in his own eye. Your brother has a speck of dirt in his eye and you pick it up. Your spouse has a speck of dirt in their eye, i.e. a little weakness. And we pick it up and we jump on them and we say, you have this X, Y and Z, you're like this X, Y and Z. And yet, we forget about the filth in our own eyes. We forget, forget about the major problems. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we're not just singling out sisters, but we need to understand this. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I was shown the hellfire and I saw that the majority of its inhabitants were women. Why Ya Rasulullah? Limadha? Why? Why are they the majority of the inhabitants of the people of hell? He said, because 
They are the majority of the inhabitants of the people of the hellfire. Why? Because one of them, their husband would do everything for them, would give them everything. Whatever she wants, he gives it. But the second that he does not give her what she, what she wants, she says, you have never done anything for me. You have never done anything for me. 